closing at the 8.30. Well, as you can see, it. <laughs> the budget is, I figured it up, we tried at 11% higher. Um, fuel deal is, I took what I did on the fuel, was, took what we're using right now, plus the price we're paying right now, which took the average. And that's, hopefully it would be any higher than that. That's how I come up with the fuel. And that's full self-explanation. That's 12%. So I talked to the oil salesman. They said that the prices he was quoting right now, that's what it would be. I ran a lot of things going to happen between now and then. But so most of it is fuel and the biggest, the biggest, biggest fuel in oil. <clears throat> right? Yeah. Because I cut, so I cut we, we did cut some places there. For the Bring them in line with costs and adjusted a few back up in line with costs. I mean, utilities, we've been running short of our oil burn for every year. I hate to see what we pay in natural gas. Place it, or we were going to have to just go ahead and fix it up and, and run it. It's worth so. I mean, it's to the point. It's worth so much. It's just it's 20 years old. So we're going to put. We thought the best thing to do would be to put pins and rails on it, which is twenty-five thousand dollars, which is a little more repair the line item repair budget can see. So and then uh, if the cylinders on the blade. So that's what that, that So what small part to replace? To so put to get to, to do a new do to do a used dozer. Uh, I was getting anywhere from depends on how good a dozer they said you wanted anywhere around anywhere from a hundred thousand to two hundred thousand right. dollars. I mean, is it at least what at least with ours, we know what we have. I mean, it's a good bulldozer. It's just a little bit older. But the undercarriage is the pins and bushes on the right. Yeah, the pins and the sprockets. Yeah, that's what they said. Yeah. 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 So I would, I think I would rather do that. You know, we're yeah. probably two or three hundred, two or three hundred hours on the dozer in a year. About the so, yeah, it's not yeah. that's what I'm talking about. That. So that's yeah. my dad's my neck. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like the crane. I mean, the crane. We know what we have. Yeah. I mean, we know it's in. You know what's what what the you know the defici deficiencies are on it and what, what's good on it. But you use the excavator and. Well, the excavator is more than. Yeah, we, at times, but the excavator got an internal problem that we were afraid is going could go any time. Oh, you're supposed to. Well, we'd already, but that that's in this year. Same, same job now as it was then? 
No, there's a little more. I mean, there's no more. There's maybe a little more responsibility. But, I mean, because they have learned some things. But um, as far as that goes, I mean, where you where we had all of them in one range, you couldn't. There's no way you could bump anybody else up. That's as clear as my I don't think I'm explaining it very well. Well, in lieu of stipend or being. It just moves them into to the, to the range that. They're at the range that I was at when, when I was the former. This would eliminate the stipend. It would eliminate the stop stipend and just put them strictly over the jury and other cases. Which seems simpler, but it also seems like it's just a way to get them more money. Well, this way you can move some people up that need to be moved up. Because there's no way because you can, there's no way you can move anybody up out of the range of them. I didn't see how you could all right, say you got a guy you want to move up, bump him up a little bit because of the job he does. No, we got a lot of those here at the courthouse, sir, that, that, that the smack cell on their, on their ranges, aren't they? That they can't oh, yeah, about, about all. I mean, this is just part of the, part of the game. Of the so, oh, yeah. I mean, yes, when I was there, it was, yeah, when, when I was there, I was maxed out. A lot of people maxed out. First thing, some of maxed out in the public. No, oh, yeah. Years, and that's where you said it. I mean, it's, but that, that's not what this was for. I mean, this was so we could, so I could move the different people up a range for the responsibility that they do. Well, I know we talked about having a job description that they better defined a number two man. But that isn't really what we're dealing with here, is it? No. choose who would be, in our opinion, who would be the best person to be the road and bridge supervisor. You'd <coughs> be looking for someone. You need a vice president. You know, to <laughs> fall into that there. We don't have one. Before. Right. Well, it'd be for well personally, it's really, it'd be really difficult for me to, to say, okay, you're the one that needs to take Phil's job because you're the most experienced. I have no idea. Mm -hmm. Well, then it's... In, 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 it's not always who has the most experience. First of all, it needs to be a person who wants to do it. Because, I mean, if you don't want to do it, I mean, it, it makes the job a little tougher. So if you, if you uh, are the vice president, you understand mm -hmm. you are next in line. Sure. And you don't take that job unless you're willing to accept that responsibility at some point or understand the possibility may occur. We have so they're capable of doing that. Uh, and you don't put somebody in that position if they're not capable, capable of doing that job. Say that was the situation five years ago. <coughs> what would we you have know, done if you, you hadn't been? You, you did the transition very nicely. Mm -hmm. So what we need to do now is have someone that could fill your shoes. And you're the best qualified to know who that person is. Well, to, it, I'd have to talk to some people first of all. I mean, I'm not, I don't want to put words in the just okay. but, but I'm saying, if you, if you feel comfortable with someone with, in, in, in your circle now, or are you thinking that you might need somebody outside the circle to be able to? No, I think, I think. There's something to think about. If, you know, yeah. No, I understand. I have, I, I think this is probably a good idea, but I have concerns because of what you're saying and what I understand. We're going to open up a can of worms here and worry about as far as, well, 
this is the avenue we have to take so we can get more money for employees or, or the employees putting pressure on their supervisors. Maybe not. Well, that's, that's right. I don't, I don't, well, not, maybe not. 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 Maybe it would be okay with me. Really would. Yep. You want ten minutes? Uh, yeah. All right. I'm going to go to the executive session for ten minutes to discuss. I'm going to have to person. I'll say a motion. Okay. It's been. Is Laura on a patch yet? Do you have a lot? No. It's just, no. They're all great. Wait for the window to open. Yeah. It's nine o'clock. We've got it. We've got it. Morning, morning, morning. Good morning. Well, we don't go through all the papers. No, I have to. Uh, <laughs> you have to. I don't know why. I looked at that sag he brought in there. Uh, this is only the third stack. Like this, I guess. From Terracon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, I want to present my budget. You good? Okay. Is there a, a chance that the solid waste disposal fees will be going up? Well, well we're pretty well steady. Mm -hmm. You know, the last meeting we went through, there wasn't going to increase. And that's Reno County? Yes. That's good news. some of the cost because it's the extent of the amount of time it took to troubleshoot and uh, they made five trips back and forth for a bit and uh, did a lot of head scratching trying to figure out what was the matter with the chain what it was I lost a steering valve on the loader uh, and they ended up finding the used one for $2,500 and getting it prepared but uh, there was a lot of troubleshooting time and all well, that. They couldn't figure out what they were off the fence yeah. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they were calling Texas, and they, they was kind of running in circles. And I got out of the expense for two trips and, and some tr troubleshooting time, which amounted to about $700. That's better than ever getting out of it, so, yeah. Okay. You know, I'm still incurring, you know, costs on, on this pit. Um, Here's the situation, of course, you know, I was full, or getting very close to full, I was up to ground level. And I called uh, KDHE and told them, I said, hey, you know, I've got the city of Stafford's wanting to tear down some buildings, and they're working with a grant. I said, and, uh, and with their grant, they're on a time limit. They got till July to have those two, uh, two structures tore down. And 
that's all I mean. I need some space here. And they allowed me, I, I asked them, I said, since I'm already full on the east end of my pit to grade, which is fine because, um, which is fine because we are permitted to go above grade if need be ever. And uh, I asked them if I could go ahead and scrape the cover off the west end and, and use that cover to cover what's full and bring that site back to the grade. And they allowed that. So, yeah. We got approved that for that shipping thing. Yes, and it's done. It's already done. Yes, Philip had uh, might come out for the dozer and do that. I mean, I didn't open all of it, but uh, I opened at least half of it. So that, you know, it gives me time to go in and tear them down. So. But the uh, progress on the pit, <coughs> you know, I, when I talked to some, I told them his permit man was kidding me. I told him, I said, hey, guys, we've spent $21,000 in surveying and engineering fees and we haven't turned shovel there yet. I said, I, didn't have, I really did not realize it was going to take, you know, I told him I've been working on this since January 1, and I didn't, I didn't realize it took this much time just to punch a hole in the ground. And, and of course, they sent, Terracon a four-page request of things they'd like done before they okay the, the final draft. And, and uh, this is my operating plan and uh, engineering draft and design plan and all that that I got to go through and look at, check over, and tell them you know that it's all right. That it's all right, and they can continue from there. Which they said right here that, that there will be some more to get to KDHE's approval, um, there is some additional surveying and drafting that will be required. But, I, you know, I did budget enough money for additional costs, CQA, and construction quality assessment. They're money. ready to go do the excavating as soon as you get the approval that out there. Yes, sir. Yeah, it'll take, it'll take a lot less time to dig the hole than it will be to I thought you had it long ago. But where do they want surveyed? I mean, I don't know. I don't look through the ship. Okay. But at least, you know, we will finally have documentation, drawings, and everything out there at the landfill that's needed. That will be nice. But also, I mean, you, we are, we're getting re permitted, but we're also getting permitted to go above grade. Also, if we ever choose to do so. No, oh, I see. On the new pit. Well, even on, on, the, on, on the old existing ones, on, you did on, do on the C and D's. We now, when you say above grade, how far can we go? Ten feet. That's quite a bit. Yeah. It's that caveat. It's a big hill. Yeah. And <laughs> see, then the reason I was able to scrape the cover off, and I could also even scrape the cover off off of the, the old C and D pit, is because they're not what you call finally closed. Once you close the pit, you, you can't have, you can't touch it again. I mean these two C and D's we have, to close them you got a cap, which is eighteen inches back to clay, and twelve inches of non permeable soil on top of that. And that hadn't been done on these, so that's all there. Is that when they come out of here and then they check and see settling on it and see how much of it's Yes. You know, you got to build them up to keep them if they settle or something too much of yeah. water. Yeah, you gotta control your erosion and make sure you got uh, Grass cover and everything. Like well, with the with the ability to go above grade in the new pit, this is going to last quite a few years. Okay. 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 I guess we recess. Wait for a public hearing on Rose Valley Township minimum maintenance road request. So we'll recess. I make motion we approve resolution 2011 10 uh, declaring certain road rates, road rates in uh, Rose Valley Township. I'll second. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion to carry. Come on in, guys.
Satus. Good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you? Good. circumstances surrounding the vehicle that uh, came up to 281 or up to highway 50 but it went out in front of a semi and so we had some moderate injuries to that person that totaled out the truck so that was kind of a synopsis for the weekend grace father's day weekend yeah <laughs> you can speak about that. i know so what about the fourth of july are you concerned about the the borrowers and so i've seen some other counties have been Discussing this, I was wondering if you're, what you thought thoughts on. I'm probably an unpatriotic guy because <laughs> I'm not a fireworks fan at all. But that's just from my background. You know? I mean, I, I I just deal with all the aftermath, and so I'm not a real fan of. Well, I've I, I seen some counties put a ban on stuff like a reading the right. other day and stuff. Yeah, yeah. they have. And it's, I wondering if it, it's kind of a mix. It's you know some have, have taken that step, some haven't. Uh, you certainly got to be a little careful with um, even the vendor to go out and purchase massive amounts of the product and then not be able to sell them. And yeah, and then they can't sell them. Yeah. You know, they're stuck with a with a sizable amount of, of loss. And um, not that that should take precedence over safety, but um, you know, we're we're probably just kind of in the middle. You know, we've got a little bit of rain, um, but we certainly haven't had as much as some and. Yet we're 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 not as dry as others, and so I I think maybe just a public message out to the um, maybe in um, in the newspapers just to be extra careful. So if it's dry, it's it's certainly dry. Uh, most of them have not taken the step of banning them completely. There's a few have. Yeah. I read that in the papers. So I was asking some right. Western Kansas. No, no, well, we're actually here for the budget, so we have one. Yep. Uh, let's start with the EMS. And really, what I mean, what we did is we uh, we tried to go with the um, the wish that you had of of taking two percent out, and so that's kind of basically what we did. Um, the office supplies have not been as, as high as what. Uh, so I guess it was three thousand dollars that year. So I'm not sure why it was that high, but I I think we can get by with with the last in that category. Um, the janitorial supplies has not been near six hundred dollars. So we were, well, we, I guess I uh, put my last one. So we went ahead and left that at that. Uh, let's just see where we did tools and small equipment. We haven't historically haven't been uh, been spending that, so we reduced that. And uh, we'll do that again next year if it if it plays out in the same direction. Uh, we kept the the um, the fuel the same, uh, kind of anticipating maybe possibly a, that continues to go up. With, and well, anticipating that 2011 is going to be higher. Hopefully, we'll be in line with with what we're doing there. But um, let's just see where the reductions. 
we didn't we didn't believe that in the education and training that would that will have a class at this upcoming year, and um, Nick will be coming out of Bar Mexico, so we should be able to lower our expense in that category. And we just put an EMT class on, so if we do have another one, uh, we'll uh, try to tie in with the state on grant funding for that. I think that is probably, that just reflects a 2% reduction. See if my math is right. So your medical supplies, Steve, is going to be less than what's um, Well, in 2010, we were 14 7, so I I mean, I, I think we can stay within within $16,000. We're not looking to do anything different than what we have in the past. Some of our big problem, well, the problem is just, it's just uh, a part of doing business when you're running three medic units, that you have to stop them all, and, and you have a lot of them that just outdate. Yeah. Well, we use them, they just outdate. And can't, uh, throw can't you know, throw them away. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but that's just one of the um, expenses of running an additional unit. It isn't just some folks sometimes think, well, it's you, you have that unit paid off. It doesn't cost you anymore to put it on the ground, but it does because even when it doesn't uh, run too much, which Maxfield doesn't run too much, but still uh, the supplies will outdate on them, and you'll have that expense. You mentioned it about the trailer packs or something. Did you know? Is it still, is it still in use? Uh, it, it, it actually, we, we got rid of it. You told, uh, you told me to do that some time ago, and um, I just hadn't gotten there. But we've still been using it. It's just a, an eyesore, and um, Commissioner Souter really wished to, to get it gone, and so uh, we went ahead and did that. So it's gone? It's gone. Okay. I have that over so we just uh, actually, um, I was able to have a guy from Stafford just take it. Um, we do, uh, the only expense we had was hundred dollars to, to just haul it off. No, it ended up down in Stafford where it belongs. He's driving. What's all the rest of them? Yeah. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> he actually scrapped. Um, he scrapped. Uh, he scrapped. He scrapped them. He scrapped it. Yeah, there's value in them. I mean, yeah, you if you want to go to the work, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in the perfect It's sewer, that's all I like. No. So it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> we got to know. It's a dumping ground. So, yes, it's gone. And uh, we actually had a, a crew meeting over there, and we're just doing that in the... Uh, well, and we were getting the utility, utility charges. Yeah, that's what I thought. I've seen the utility stuff coming on. Thank you. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Won't have them. Well, we'll just have them for the garage now. Okay. Won't have them any longer for the. And and we'll have a in in the warm weather. Actually, just the warm weather. We'll have uh, crew meetings over at the high school. So we've already done that. It it was in really really sad shape. Yeah, <laughs> that The floor yeah, the floors were. Big old guy like me is wonder. I just didn't fall through the floor. Oh, that's that's. Okay. All right. That's that one.
year or two. Probably a balance, and if that was uh, kind of jumping back to the EMS one, we probably need to balance that just a, a little bit better, even though, uh, you know, majority of our office supplies are relative to the EMS, but uh, I think that's why we, uh, why we actually reduced it uh, on the EMS one, because we figured that we probably should channel a little bit of that more over towards fire, since we had that much. Go ahead. Yeah. Um, the, the two main items that we cut, Vehicles, uh, we, re we reduced it from thirty-six thousand down to thirty-two nine, and uh, other equipment. Uh, we felt like we could easily uh, reduce that a little bit. Uh, so we haven't pulled much out of that. Yeah, is your copy saying different than my copy? You said thirty-two nine. Well, that's what I wrote down, but I don't think oh, that's what it is. That's, that's not what we put yeah. on here. We reduced it by 35, so we dropped $1,000. Yeah, okay. The thing with capital outlay is, is some of the, you know, our trucks are extremely expensive. You know, acquire one here in the ranch program, so we've tried to do that, but eventually some of the bigger trucks, if you can't, then you're going to have to come up with a sizable amount of Change. What's your pretty fair condition right now with trucks? Uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to do it. Um, for the year that we've had, we're, we're hanging in there. We're doing, we're doing okay. Well, um, I'll stress any, on this year. We haven't had any major breakdowns, thank goodness. Um, but, I mean, Small breakdown. Yeah. Yesterday, we'll talk about here in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have an aging fleet, you know, so but, uh, we're taking good care of what we have and making the best of everything. So um, I can't complain about it right now. So we're doing okay. We really need to be cognitive of of, uh, of the numbers of trucks that we have at times, and, and we have we've we've reduced the numbers. And firefighters have a tendency to want to even keep trucks when they're getting new trucks, just to have it as a spare, and, and uh, it, it becomes an issue of, of, of station space and, and just maintenance, yeah. yeah, because the old ones, you know, if they're ready to be traded off, they're probably not, uh, not really inexpensive to maintain, they're, they're not free again, <laughs> it's just not free. Firefighter equipment was was lowered, and um, that's another one. You know, we we, we acquired a, a very big grant, two hundred thousand dollars for firefighting equipment. It, it's good. That's a good thing. It's it's always a good thing, but you have to be cognizant that that it throws you in a different cycle. Instead of a cycle of, of buying a, like a few sets every so every year. You really don't want to do that because there's no need to buy sets when it all works out. Yeah. But it all works yeah. out at once. And so what you have to do is you have to put money aside so because most of it's gonna wear out all at once. Oh, Isn't a bad thing. You just gotta be cognizant of what it, it threw you in a different cycle of replacement. And that's what you're doing, obviously. You, you gotta kinda of build up the, the the capital outlay so you have monies to do that with. Remind me, the leased building is sewer? We pay, we pay, so if it's utilities, I think it's utilities and some of the expenses to um, sewer, Hudson, Max Metal, and we probably have to leave Stafford too, don't we? Because the city owns this, that building is Stafford. So. Probably. Okay. Yeah. So. 
And well, they own the one building. Uh, yes, that's correct. Yes. And the leases the are 4430. What are, what are we leasing? I would say that that's what it is. Yes. That's what it comes down to. Uh -huh. 4430. But you have leased building expense and then you have leases. Yeah, I'm not sure okay. why it's too. Huh? I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well. I'm not no, unless that's I'm something that, you know, if there's a, a repair or something. I don't know, but that still should be. Oh, that might, that might be what we, uh, we might, yeah. well, I, I think you know, what, what that might be is, TJ mentioned, it might be when there's a, when there's a, a minor repair that's needed. Oh, I'm okay. calling that a, a lease building expense instead of a lease, the lease itself. Which we've been pretty fortunate that you know the cities have kind of take care of I think they've kind of taken care of us. We we get by pretty good, I I have to say. Seven thousand dollars is pretty reasonable for all of that. That's pretty good. And when you look at uh, you look at the city of Stafford, we we have a lot of trucks over there. So this basically offsets, helps them offset the utility yeah. cost and stuff. They, okay. they, they pay all of those expenses. They're not paying the store for the truck. Okay. I just and, that, and nobody's talked about that going up because I can see these small cities having problems with that. Having, having, especially if utilities are that more less. And it's a fee for the use of this stuff based on utilities only. Cost of propane and stuff to keep them warm. I'm surprised they aren't. I, I think the complaint yeah. advantage, uh, and, and there is even advantage in, in Stafford, not as much in Stafford as the other stations. Uh, some of the other stations, well, Maxville also, but I, I guess I talk of the small, the small cities. They have the advantage of being able to use the trucks to put out their city fires too. So there is some advantage back their direction also. That they don't own any trucks, and so they actually have a, a firefighting fleet for their for their businesses and homes in town that they that they don't uh, they don't have that added expense of having their own trucks for sure. section of it. Not as much seem to have been coming out of that salary. It's kind of supposed to be split between fire, EMS, and emergency management, all the salaries together. So I think your Steve's salary a little bit. Part of both. Yeah, part of both part. So that would reduce just a little bit. Off supplies the same as with the other two. It's kind of hard to figure out which yeah. so it goes to which department. So um, just reduced the office supply line item, $150 there. Telephone item that stayed the same. Meeting and travel expenses have been reduced by $100. Dues and subscriptions, that's been reduced by $150. Uh, capital outlay items there, the computer equipment, other equipment, and state decision. We don't have to buy throughout the year. At least we can save up for that purchase. This 
historically we haven't spent a lot of uh, money, at least since I've been here, out of that one. But with uh, hearing that uh, the two bays out there into the emergency operations center, we anticipate probably having some expenses in that regard. Uh, we had the telephone. The telephone guy was finishing up over at the index, and uh, I, I told him that you know we were doing some things and just asking you know what if there's anything we should do while we have the, the walls open. Uh, and he actually came out and ran us some wires, but uh, he priced this uh, phone system, the expensive, uh, <laughs> like shot me. Uh, but one thing that he mentioned was that a couple counties had kind of the brains of the system. They put in brand new systems because they, they acquired grants or whatever. And they actually had the brains of the system hanging on their walls and weren't using them. Um, if it's uh, and, and actually, I, I guess I'm asking for approval in in reverse because I went ahead and just went ahead and made a request that if they could donate uh, Brown County, if they could donate for a nominal cost, uh, that system in the brains of the system, I thought at least we we could have that and uh, and then look about the rest of it later. So, uh, so I said I'll come back to you with what. with what require I get from them in that regard. But it would allow us to, uh, if we needed to, you know, if we had a, a further big event happen in the county, we could, we could have folks go there and they'd be able to tie in telephones and um, we'd have phone hookups for them and everything. And, uh, but those are pretty expensive. Yes, they are. But we'd save about half mm -hmm. if, we can, if we can get the brain to the system. The red. Okay, go ahead. We got three. We have three minutes. Okay. I mean, we can. We wait for some. If you want to discuss something after we got. Center for counseling coming. Okay. okay. Nobody's out there yet. There okay. Isn't? Okay. We the the red pickup uh, blew another. Uh, I guess it's it's a problem with it, that uh, model of pickup, but they they blow out one of the um, spark plugs and they just kind of out to go. <laughs> we uh, it's got 150 thousand miles on it. It it did it once and and uh, one, of our, one of our firefighters. How to get loose? They, it's just, it's what it is, it's an aluminum head, and after time, heating and cooling and stuff, it just, I guess they work for the and they eventually just the pressure blows the blow. That's good, good, that'll get done. So, uh, actually, Marshall, they've never heard of that. one of our firefighters, Marshall Sanders, fixed it the first time, and, um, <laughs> but it did again yesterday. Another one, another one or something. So, um, I, I think it's time to, to retire the red truck. Um, I didn't know if it was possible to piggyback. I, I knew that the sheriff's office had um, had put out a bid for a, for a replacement truck. I didn't know if it's possible to piggyback on theirs. I know there's a done deal, but but can you can you piggyback on another bid process or not? Can may not don't. may not even be a, a big issue to to actually get bids anyhow. So we could just do that too. Um, they usually just trade off, don't they? Oh. Right, and that would be our, our plan. Is first of all, we got to see if Marshall can You're looking at again. getting a brand new truck? Either a brand new one or a, or a replacement one. Yeah, we're your budget for that. Well, in the capital, let me see. Can we pull it out of the capital? We got the vehicle line in the capital line. You're talking about this year's budget, yeah. not next year's budget. Correct. In the vehicles? Yes. Have you spent any of it? Have it. Have it? No. I'm going to get one for 10000 I guess we are. Right? <laughs> I don't know if they got any of them for 10000 mm -hmm. uh, Used ones are selling so high right now, or all the used vehicles are selling pretty high, so I don't know if uh, we can look, you know, um, and see if there's anything out there available. Um, or, or go there. 
but I can bring something back next week on that. Uh, so is there a dance in the head where the spark plugs fly out? No. No? No, it just starts They just kind of just lay over? <laughs> Start. <laughs> you know you did it again. <laughs> never heard that. I have, I have never heard that. First time it blew the coil pack apart when it came up out of there. The coil sit directly on top of the plug, mm -hmm. and just a boot below it, shredded the boot, busted the coil pack, and uh, the spark plug was not to be found. It comes out like a rocket. I like the whole thing. Get hit by lightning. <laughs> so was that by the V lot? St. John EMS, St. John Fire, stand by for page. Uh, it was um, on the 90th. It was a, uh, it was a couple miles back to the, back to the west. St. John EMS, St. John Fire, need to respond to Kenwood. They called and advised the alarm is going off. They have not found anything, and it is not telling them an area. Oh, was this week? Uh -huh. Was it yesterday or Saturday? Mm -hmm. I think mean, yesterday. You know what? Uh, this is something that maybe uh, you might want to. I'm, I'm actually kind of making a plug for uh, for Carolyn. But <laughs> I, I mean, this is actually mine. Little reader, but it's. It would actually allow her to, if she wanted to give a presentation, she could actually give this right off of this little tablet. And I'm not able to, if I could hit your, your internet access, because, but I don't have the password. You can't hit it. It's supposed to be secure. Well, I had to. If not, we're going to fire Randy. I know Randy. Randy gives me <laughs> he did? access. No, he gave me access to, to one of them. But, but I'm not able to hit it. But if, if you're able to hit it, you can actually uh, you can actually pull up, you know, whatever it is. And so, it, and, and this will actually hook up to a, to a, a really small projector. So she was giving a presentation to somebody. She could either give it here or she could give it. She has a laptop. Yeah, this is just a little bit. Well, I know, but. But I mean, eventually, it, it might be something that um, that you want to consider. Most most folks say that this is a laptop. This is actually the way that a lot of folks are coming. It's like a, uh, the world is going because what you'll end up doing is storing stuff on some just main Is that a Kindle or a different variety or what? No, the, a Kindle is just a reader. This is actually a, uh, an iPad. So it, it does a lot more than just the Kindle does. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll come back to you with something on the pickup. Okay. Well, thanks. We will recess. Yeah. Well, good morning. I'm Mark Kine, the President CEO of SDSI, Southwest Developmental Services Incorporated. We're the Community Developmental Disability Organization for 18 counties, which includes Stafford County. The package you have there in front of you, the first page there is, is the request we have for 2012. Um, went out and used the 2010 census data as far as population base for the 18 counties. And uh, we used the, we've done this now for several years with you all, so this, I'm sure all is familiar with the CDO administration. We calculate projectable. We'll utilize $160,000 of county funding uh, for our budget, and so we just divide that by the 160 by 18. We have the, the 88 to 89 from each county, and the rest of the, the request is based on the population of Stafford County compared to the, the 18 total. Uh, as you can see, it's 21,652 for a total amount, uh, total request of 30,541. 
It's up slightly, but that's because of some population changes that occurred. The total request, the request for population is essentially the same as we asked for last year. And that, that has not increased for, for a number of years. If you have any questions while I'm going through this, please, please stop me and ask. And I'll do my best to answer you. The, the, the three counties that we have are, are uh, most of our providers in Martin, Finney, and Seward counties. We asked a little bit more there. You can see the one column is called economic benefit factor. The next page really uh, gives some economic reasons why we asked for the additional money. Uh, there's almost $25 million that come in to counties and we break it out uh, into the southwest area, 13 counties there, and in the central Kansas region. And of course the southwest being uh, Garden City and, and Liberal in the central Kansas would be primarily Great Bend, so a little bit over 10, ten and a half million dollars come into that area. The the biggest chunk of that is the home and community based services waiver, the Medicaid payments. That comes straight to the provider. They have a Medicaid number they provide the service, they bill, they get paid directly. So that money does not flow to the SDSI. Page three shows you the local finance plan and the use of the funds and county funds, as well as what we uh, get, which is another uh, state funding, which is called state aid, it's discretionary funding. It shows you there in 2010 what we actually spent, what we paid out to providers. And in 2011, there's a projection of what we, we think we'll be paying out to providers. The big, the big item in that, of course, is that transportation subsidy, the very top line. Pages four, five, and six is the local finance plan, and it really just spells out what we do. We meet twice a year with providers, June and November, to talk about this plan. Uh, if there's any sort of funding changes, for instance, uh, the state aid courses on the state fiscal year, July 1 through June 30th, and then of course the uh, counties are in calendar year. We did find out last week that we are going to take a 3% cut in state aid, so that is one funding source that, that will be reduced somewhat, so we'll reflect that somehow in this plan. Uh, the plan is only a six month plan. Page two, or page five, I'm sorry, at the very top, just to show you real briefly there, the transportation, that's the big item there, and uh, a brief description of it, uh, the, the coverage, we pay for adults only on that one. The unit uh, is residential or day services, and then uh, the rate that we pay is if, if they're just providing residential, or they're just providing day, or if they're providing both, whatever, whatever we make. The providers will bill us on a monthly basis and we'll cut a check to them shortly after we get the, the bills from them. We do double check and make sure that uh, we're not doubling up. We do have folks that sometimes change service providers. When they do, we only pay one provider, so it depends on when that individual makes that, that change from one service provider to another. Uh, so this on this transportation, is this where the clients reside and Transportation is from where they reside to the workshop. To the workshop, if they have facilities. a yeah, if they have a, uh, a job in the community, it could be to that. Uh, to and from shopping excursions, to and from recreational events, mm -hmm. and, yeah, whatever, whatever it is that, that, that uh, they need to do for their for their lives. Page six shows you. The Medicaid rates do not have uh, transportation built into them, and that's one right. of the reasons we, right. we utilize this transportation. And it, you know, of course, you can never account for, for the fluctuation in fuel prices. Mm -hmm. and $4 a gallon, and last week we were in Topeka, three thirty-five a gallon, we come out to Garden City, it was three seventy-eight or three eighty. I don't remember. I mean, you know, the ups and downs, you just can't, you can't, uh, as you all know, you can't uh, guess what they're going to be. Page seven is the list of our community service providers. And we broke this out uh, at the top, about the top two thirds of it there is the direct care or case management. And these are the pro uh, providers that provide the day-to-day -day services to individuals. 
And as you can see, we also broke it out by city so that commissioners can see where they're located. Garden City, Great Bend, Dodge, and a couple outlying communities. But again, this just uh, shows that most of our providers are in Great Bend, Garden City, or Liberal. And there's only one in Liberal, but they are fairly large ones as far as. I see just one in Dodge City, too. Yeah, Arrowhead West actually uh, affiliates with us to provide services in a couple of counties over here in, in, in the five county area. Is there down in Barber County? You know, there is there still there in Med in uh, Medicine, Lodge. Medicine Lodge. Yes. Yeah. Last I knew there were. I yeah. Also heard something that they may be pulling out there. I don't right. know, but but they are as far as I know now. I guess. Hey Jade, this is the same uh, information that we've provided uh, since 2004 when we became the, the Community Development Disability Organization. Really, the only things that ever ch that, have, that have changed recently on this, the top top bullet there, uh, our network of uh, individuals is 1,032 now. Currently, 677 individuals are receiving services in our 18 counties. Page nine is our uh, organizational chart. Board of direct, direct excuse me, board of directors. Uh, your representative here from Stafford County is Jerry Maddox, and we have a representative from each one of our counties right now. I have three counties that, that I don't have a board member from, and I'm making sure they you know that when I go out and hopefully come up with somebody. The organizational chart has not changed as far as ten individuals, including myself. That work for SDSI. The only thing that has changed from last year is the administrative assistant in Great Bend went from full time to part time. We saved a little bit of money there in our budget. Cut back, and uh, otherwise, it's, it's the same. And page 10 is, is uh, several things, uh, just information for you. The top part there is uh, the applications that we receive. And it goes back uh, for historical purposes to 2005. The 2011 information is the data we had available when we put this packet together, which was just through March 30th. So that's you just have three months worth of 2011. That's a lot different between those other. Yeah, there is. <laughs> I make sure I point that out because sometimes people look at it. What's happening? Even with that, when you look at the four years, like from 2005 to 2006, you see some pretty good fluctuations at time, and, and, and we don't know why that happens. It happens with the uh, children's services too. Uh, Sunflower Diversified, uh, Russell Child Development Center. And we have three early intervention providers in our 18 counties and the one down Seward County too. They see fluctuations in numbers and there's really no explanation that we know of. It just, it happens. And, uh, and we, of course, uh, deal with it. The middle part of the page is the state funded waiting list. This money's gone uh, July 1st. We have 25 people that we currently fund uh, with state grant funds, and those state grant funds are gone July 1st. The legislature, the governor did not recommend uh, a renewal of that money. The legislature did not appropriate that money, and July 1st is gone. We did uh, submit a, a recommendation to the board of directors in a May <coughs> meeting that we're not just cutting everybody off there. There are some folks that we think we can get transitioned over to. PD waiver, the physical disability waiver. There's some folks we think that uh, can do some other things with as far as transitioning. And then there's some folks that we're going to go ahead and fund at a lesser amount. We're going to do a needs assessment type uh, and see what we can do as far as lessening the dollar amount and fund them through December 31st because we felt like we received this information late in the year here, state fiscal year, and we didn't want to just cut them off. But yeah, so we, we, we're going to fund them through some uh, different monies uh, through December 31st, and after that, I don't know what we're going to do. But it's, it's not something we can sustain ongoing. It's just temporary. Yes. And then that home and community based service uh, waiver, the waiting list down there, 345 individuals, that is the Medicaid waiver. And uh, we did get some waiting list money. I'm not sure how much is going to go to the waiting list. The legislature did appropriate approximately $6.6 .6 million. 
Statewide, that list is a little bit over 3,000 individuals. So uh, we'll see what we'll get as far as uh, funding on that on that amount. It, it, it is a state waiting list, so the state starts down their list and sends us out the information uh, for the individuals in our area. The very last page is just a map. It shows you the geographical locations uh, that each one of the community developmental disability organizations cover. And as you can see, we're number 21 under a legend there. You can see the 13 counties in the southwest corner and the five counties here in central Kansas that we cover. Are you a state? You, were you created by the state of Kansas? No, actually, SDSI was formed in 1974, and we're not 501c3, not for profit. And we originally provided services. That, uh, we stopped providing services in uh, 1999. So we're a private, not for profit organization. In fact, the statute that creates CDOs, and it used to be CMRCs, Community Mental Retardation Centers, uh, requires them to be a not-for-profit, with the exceptions of some county governments, Sedgwick County, Johnson County, and Cowley County. Now, why not? Now, there's four counties that do that, uh, that do provide that service, but everybody else is a not-for-profit. Which they funded, of course, and I mean, actually, it's it's a it's a Medicaid funding that we get for our CDO administration funds. It's, it's it's really the flip flop of what the Medicaid for services is because the state puts up forty cents and, and approximately, and the feds put up sixty cents on every dollar for a Medicaid waiver. For administration, it's just the opposite. We put up the state puts up sixty, feds put up forty, and that's how we're. And then county funds also. And then we'll, right. That's yeah, and you can see most of what we do with your county funds, it does go out to affiliates to help uh, with the services. So you don't provide any services and you farm these services out to the different organizations right. in the area, like right. Sunflower or. Right. We're one of the few in the state that, that, that actually is just a CDO only that does not have, that we don't also provide services. See, there was, back in 1995 when DD reform passed, there were 32 licensed providers in the state. Now there's over 300. That reform opened it up to competition. And quite frankly, in a lot of these areas, the CDDO is also a service provider and also has competition. And we have oversight responsibilities. So we do quality assurance, and we do quality assurance on Rosewood and Sunflower and Pathways and Mosaic. Are Rosewood and Sunflower, are they non-profits or are they a government entity? Sunflower is a not-for-profit. Rosewood is a for-profit. Uh, Pathways, Res Care is a for-profit that's actually traded on the stock exchange. So we have we have a wow. number of we have a number of different. But you have the option of using whichever one. Well, and actually, it's the choice of the individual. I, see. I mean, as long as they get a license through the state of Kansas, and they can affiliate with us, they have to have both in order to do it. And they affiliate with us as the, as the CDDO then it's up to individuals in the service system to choose the provider. And that's what's really opening this thing up to competition. Like I said, 32 licensed providers, now we have 300. There's a bunch. As you can see from our list, we have a bunch. A lot of those are small organizations that we have, mid-size, that may provide services to 6, 10, 12, 15, 20 people. And then you have some of the large ones, Rosewood, uh, Sunflower, Mosaic, and Garden City. Mosaic and Liberal is just a fairly large one. But you have several large providers, and we have a bunch of smaller providers. But really, quite frankly, most of the providers are for profits because they've been started by an individual, and uh, we have a few not for profits Mosaic of Garden City, Mosaic of Liberal, Sunflower Diversified. Um, I think there's another one I can't think of. But most of them really get started up by individuals that used to work for one of the other providers and thought they could do it better or wanted to try something on their own. It's purely competitive. And, and uh, one of the things that, that we feel we do is, is we make sure that we do our best to keep that balance so that the individuals know they have choices, they know what those choices are, and we're not one of them. We don't have a dog in the fight, so to speak. So, if there is some sort of problem, we feel we can step in and 
sometimes we've been called a referee and sometimes quite frankly have been. Thank you. We well, appreciate uh, what y'all have done. Stafford County has really uh, supported individuals with developmental disabilities and, and helped uh, enhance the services. Right. Else? I yeah, I don't know what's going to happen, but we're we're I think we're in for some major changes. Uh, we have we have a new governor, we have a new secretary in SRS. Uh, he's he's uh, replaced a number of people in SRS. We had contract negotiations last week, and it's evident that that they have some other things in mind, and I don't know what they are. But, but uh, we're going to see some changes. But you, you still get a lot of your funding directly from the state. We do, yes. We do. Yeah. All we do is the admin, like I said. Other organizations get that too, those throughout the state. But as I said too, they're also service provider organizations too, not just you know, all we do is the administration. Next time they go to print. Armory. <laughs> That's the state did that. I did. <laughs> they did that. Yeah, I just didn't get that off their website. And okay. Print. <laughs> yeah, Harvey Marion County. Yeah, that would be that'd be a little bit. Better. Anything else? Yeah, they are coming. Yeah, right, that's what they are coming. Oh, we do it. Trying to take my stuff away. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank I appreciate you. it. Do you need them next? Okay. They're late. Should we take five minutes? Can you come up? She's just going to be watched. I got my budget for today. And as requested, I, I reduced it to 2%. Um, I really squeezed on a lot of other, my other line items so I could try to keep my salaries up in case, just for step raises and then in case you decide to do a cost of living. I um, hope I don't need any office or computer equipment. I figured since I just got all my computers replaced this year from the state, that was quite a savings. So hopefully that'll that those two line items will be um, good for next year. And then I talked to you about my coffee machine and we did discuss how we're going to handle that, so that's not a problem. This record and storage expense, is that this all mine? Yeah. Yeah, that's so. Um, how, how often do we use that? How often and do how we How often do we send stuff over there? I've only sent once. I'm going to be on a five year rotation. Every five years, I'll, I'll take five years out of my vault and send down there. And I'm about, I think next year will probably be my five year cycle to send five and years. And you've never had to retrieve anything? No, no, not yet. No, I was just curious. Yeah. It? it came close because Carl was wanting to know something oh, the other day for back in the 30s. We found that down in Nita's vault, got back to 40 in the 40s and um, and that was close enough for Carl but I thought I might have to go last week down there but he said no that's good enough it, is most of them falls of the, the con control stuff where they preserve the stuff or, right I was thinking about the annex since you've got to have room over there for you know, additional storage and stuff it's, if we make those you know actually make the areas over there could some of that be stored over there or do you think it needs to be in the continent? It's, it's archival, so the historical society probably, probably has their be, recommendations. Probably need to be like in an area yeah. that's going to be controlled. Yeah, that's humidity, that. humidity control, temperature control, and then also they like security for uh, like a vault. It is what the historical society recommends. Okay, just so. And this is stuff that can't cannot be thrown away. No, it this is permanent records. This is the tax rolls and the general ledgers. Goes back to the 1800s. Put all that down there. I don't remember when we cleaned that vault out. 
Was there 10 tons of books? Remember Philip Wayne? Yeah, a bunch of stuff. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. That, that is a bunch of stuff. He's afraid he's going to fall through the floor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but on this subject, I am looking into microfilm, which it would be a whole lot cheaper to store a little roll of microfilm than these big books of tax rolls. But that's going to be an additional cost. But if you guys want me to look into it, I would like to. At some point, we really need to make the move, the transition. And, you know, the, those microfilm copies could be replaced with those big books, which would save a storage space in the salt mines. I'm not going to go back and microfilm what's in the salt mines. But if I could get started on a point here and start going forward. But it's going to be more expensive. But don't the originals have to be kept, or can they be? If you have it on microfilm, that's what I call archival, and okay. that's considered good enough. Okay. But so, I mean, is that something you guys would like to see done, or? I don't care. <laughs> Well, it's going to save it you more storage costs. No, I, I was, I, I just, I thought about this the other day and wondered, you know, how often, because isn't there a, to retrieve something is like 150 yeah. bucks or yeah. whatever. Or the, yeah. And I would think if that was, you know, a weekly occurrence or a monthly, something like that, then yes. I try to keep 25 years in my vault right. because usually you don't go back much more than that. Um, but um, I would like to get to the point where I keep a PDF copy on our server and then keep a microfilm copy in the vaults so then I wouldn't have those big tax, those mm -hmm. big books mm -hmm. to take to the vault. I'd just have the microfilm roll. And that would be our archival yeah. copy. Which. And who's to say in a couple more years, maybe there'll be some glorious computer program to shove the book in there and it takes care of everything. <laughs> Let's the whole book use it up. Yeah. Retrieve all the message. Yeah. Okay. It's getting close to that all on us. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Especially that little iPod thing, whatever it is, it felt like so, and it holds a gigabyte of. Uh, hi. Hi. I'm Linda Lockwood, Center for Counseling, and I want to extend um, apologies from Dwight Young that he's unable to be here this morning. He's ill. So. Don't miss no excuse. That's no excuse. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And uh, you have copies of our budget request, and uh, we are requesting our budget funding from Stafford County remain the same as it has in previous years. We understand that things continue to be tight across the state as it is for us and it is for most people. So. Um, we're requesting a hold the line um, proposal at $19,096 uh, from Stafford County. Here in this uh, packet, you have information regarding all the services that we provide and a little bit of history about kind of what's been going on. We've, uh, I've been here with Dwight over the last several years talking about, you know, how difficult it's been for mental health centers and all the budget cuts. And over the last um, several years, the centers lost $624,000 in grant cuts. And what happened was is the state decided to move um, our grant funding, which co covers the uninsured and the underserved population, and they moved that into Medicaid with the idea that, well, you just bill more Medicaid and you'll make it up in Medicaid. Um, well, and, and with the new administration who uh, is fiscally conservative and believes that we're spending too much in Medicaid, those um, directives that we've gotten from SRS are now coming back to be difficult once again, um, asking us not to spend so much in Medicaid at the same time that they're asking us to reduce the number of individuals who are in state hospital care in psychiatric treatment facilities for youth and also state hospital care for youth. So the squeeze is really coming down to the local level. Um, and that's the situation that we find ourselves in today. On page two of your packets, you'll see that there is a list in red of the services that we have had to discontinue because of our budget cuts. And later on in the packet, you'll see there's a breakdown of all of the services that we provide by county and how many individuals are served. 
In Stafford County, we saw 112 clients last year, um, and these are the services here that we no longer can, can continue to provide because, again, of those budget cuts. We keep that in, information in here because we're really concerned about what's going to happen, and as the get cuts continue, um, we fear that something's going to go badly and that there will be a negative outcome with the consumer. And we really want to be able to come back and say, look, these are the things we, can, we can't do any longer, and this is why. If things are getting tough for our consumers, this is why. That um, a graph of how tough it's getting is on page three of your packet, three and four. This is a, a graph of the suicide attempts and fatalities that we've had over uh, since 2004. And um, our, the fatalities, fortunately, have remained relatively low. Um, any, any loss of life is tragic. But the number of attempts, is, of attempts is significantly increasing. And we are quite concerned about that. These are numbers of clients who are known to us. And with con continuing to cut back resources and shrink that safety net of services to providers, and these are the people we know about, we continue to be concerned about the people we don't know that haven't even been, had the opportunity to come and seek services from us. These are ones that are reported by the, uh, law enforcement or something? Um, these, are, these are clients that are known to us, and so we do an incident report on any client that we know has had a, an incident of a suicide attempt. And generally, it does come to us through law enforcement because there's been emergent, emergent medical care provided. So that, And then they call us to do a screen to find out what we're going to do with that consumer after so that. That's a lot of it is a lot, and I did some additional research um, by county, and um, according to the Center for Disease Control uh, at the federal level, individuals who live in rural areas are at higher risk for suicide than those who are not. And um, you may, I don't know if you find this surprising or not, I, I did, that it's 37% more likely for an individual living in a rural area to commit suicide than in an urban area. And the highest risk is between white males, 45 and 60. I thought possibly so maybe well, yeah. drug related. Is yeah. it, is it basically drug related? I thought I read that. Well, there, 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 are, are, there, are, um, there are a lot of drug related um, suicides, but when you take it per capita, per population, and you take it down to scale, um, it's actually in the, in the rural areas, and it is out of lack of accessibility of services. Uh, again, kind of tying back to you know what we don't provide anymore because we can't, and also um, the, the consumer's lack of accessing those services. When you're out you know, several miles from your nearest available provider, it's difficult to get those services. And there's also a stigma attached, people not wanting others to know their business. So um, in regard to youth services, if you're looking for a board certified child psychiatrist from the, uh, from basically Central Kansas, Great Bend, to, to the Colorado border, there's one, one, that serves the entire western part of the state. Mm -hmm. So we uh, get our services through ARMPs, physicians' assistants, and so forth, because a board-certified child psychiatrist, they can't cover the entire half of the state. So it just speaks to the reduced availability of services, not just in our four-county catchment area, but actually across the state. So um, the next page on page four, um, we decided to take a look at this. You know, perhaps as things are getting difficult, more difficult for consumers, are we seeing more clients? And is that the reason we're seeing a number of an increase in attempts? And actually, it's about the same. So. Um, it, it really, you know, we can't say there's a causality of our reduced uh, availability of services, but we are watching it because we're concerned about that. Um, and through the rest of the, uh, you'll find that on page seven is our uh, revenue and uh, eight expenses, breaking those out by the county line item. Or by line item. I don't know if you have any questions there. Medicaid, you'll see on line 16 of page 7, is our largest revenue source at $3.3 million. And um, all Medicaid is considered to be too high in the state currently with the administration. So they're asking us to reduce that. And when that's our primary funding source, that does continue to put a strain on our available resources. Um, the request for services has not diminished. Actually, it is increasing. Um, in regard to children's services, last month we had <coughs> referrals for 30 more new kids that we hadn't seen before. Um, we believe that economic times and just uh, society stresses are increasing the stress on the family and then putting more strain on kids and families' ability to cope. So um, a couple of things, or one notable thing that's changed since uh, we visited you last, uh, since we were here last week or last year was that we did move our offices from the county health department to um, the Homestead Leisure Home. And um, 
in three, for more space, basically. The office we had in the, in the health department was really small and basically needed me, you know, doing some therapy there and to be able to serve some families and children or families with multiple children, um, we needed larger space. So we have a really nice arrangement with Fisher Homestead, and that's working out well. We're really pleased to have that partnership with them. Brandy Turner is providing services down here on a regular basis, and then we have case managers for both adults and children that come to the county um, several times a week to see our consumers that are here. We've, um, one of the services that we did have to uh, discontinue, and this is probably a significant factor for the Stockton County residents, is we had to discontinue transportation. It just, there wasn't a funding stream available for sending a van to go around and pick everybody up and haul them to Great Bend. And uh, so we had to discontinue that. But that will be of some impact to the residents here in Stockton County. Any questions? Yes, ma'am. I know transportation is a big issue. Seems like just before that was one of the biggest expenses was transportation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We had contracted with um, the state to provide some Medicaid transportation for the consumers just to help them access the services. And um, half, only a few months into our contract, they came back and told us they're lowering the rates. They cut the rates, and um, so we're going to pay the same amount. And then started at a diminishing who could get a ride and what were the conditions of somebody getting a ride and um, it was just too costly for us to maintain. We were losing quite a bit of money on that service.